Nine for Nine, presented by AT&T. The 1999 World Cup was a huge event. It's been covered a lot. So it was a challenge to kind of come at this topic in a new and fresh way. I met with Julie Foudy, who was a co-captain of the 1999 U.S. Women's National Team. And Julie just happened to mention to me, you know, I have like a ton of home video from 1999. She sent me some of the clips, and from the very first one I saw, I knew that there was something special there. You had this kind of uncensored look at the team on the bus and in the hotel rooms and at practice. And it's just really special access to such a huge event and something that fans and viewers just really aren't accustomed to. So I knew right then that we had something that could make a compelling story. of World Cup fever has reached a crescendo in just three short weeks. More than a half million people filling stadiums across the United States. All eyes in the soccer world are on the women's World Cup tournament now the underway across crowd the United at tomorrow's States. final will be the largest ever anywhere to witness a women's sporting this event. This is a moment in American culture, not just for women's sports, embracing women athletes in this magnitude. best known group of unknown women ever to captivate America. And the athletes themselves realize they're part of something special. Should we start jogging, like at the game? Dun, dun, dun. Long time ago, now we just hobble out. Ah! Hi! Do you got your boots on? I do. Hi! Hi, Ray Ray! It's been 14 years. Hi! Hi! I was like, what? You guys are all on time. Yeah, we're here. Do you think it looks bigger or smaller? I just think it looks big. It's just big. <laughs> it's just big. Mia Hamm with a chance to give her team the lead. Shot at the goal! One of America's greatest teams ever. How much do you miss this camera? <laughs> Huh? And your face like this. How much? Sorry. How much? Taking How much? all my strength not to punch you and throw it. Back in 1999, I was the co-captain of the U.S. Women's National Team and self-appointed team videographer. <laughs> Everywhere we went during that incredible summer, my camera came with us. The walk to training. What's up, coach? So nice to have you with that damn video camera <laughs> every time somebody walks out. Do you remember when you first discovered that I had a camera that just wouldn't go away? Oh, yeah. It was hard not to discover <laughs> you had a camera. So you trusted me with a camera? No, no. Get that thing out of here. <laughs> the team didn't like the camera at first. Take love to the camera. Get out of here! But they eventually came around. It's like a zit. Growing outside your heat. And allow me to film a behind the scenes journey no other camera crew could have captured. This is Academy Award stuff. Yeah. The players, like you've never seen before. Bubba's crowd! <laughs> And may not ever want to see again. You're gonna get it. Don't no, pop it. Wait till it's it really big oh, and white. Bad. Our journey to the 1999 World Cup final ended right here at the Rose Bowl.
And now eight of us from that team are together again. Rose Bowl, you're not recording. Oh, you're doing it on here. Because <laughs> no one remembers who we are. My name's Michelle Akers. <laughs> Otherwise known as Mufasa, with the heart of a lion and hair of a lion. Hi, I'm Joy Fawcett. <laughs> Mama Joy, our calm, collected one, and our first real soccer mom. Brianna Scurry. Bri, our goalkeeper. That look tells you everything you need to know. Hi, I'm Mia Ham. Pisces. Mia, the face of our team. Named after a ballerina, if you can believe it. Carla Overbeck. Carla, our rock and fearless captain. I'm Christine Lilly. Lil, as dependable as they come, with a forehead we'd like to bronze. Brandy Chastain. Yep, she's the one who took her shirt off. Good thing she doesn't have my gut. Here she comes, camera crew. She's going to take her shirt off and do one of these. People always ask, are you the one who took your shirt off? Someone asked me that, yeah. too. All the time. Did you even get that? I don't get that. <laughs> the Women's World Cup of Soccer begins this Saturday at several sites in the United States. They say it's the largest women's-only sporting event in the world. They're signing autographs and granting interviews, hoping to push along a cultural shift that would put women's team sports more on par with men. We came up with a mission statement, and that mission statement is to stage a breakthrough event for women's sports and to inspire the next generation of female athletes. Who's your favorite player on the American team? Yeah. Women's sports has never seen anyone quite like Mia Hamm. She may be the star, but she's also a true team athlete. It's about the game and, and getting the game where we want it to be. A record crowd is expected at Giant Stadium this Saturday. Not for football, for the women's World Cup opener. We've been together for six months down in Florida. We've been training for years for this, and so this is our time. We're ready. How do you guys feel about leaving Florida? I'm well, coming back. Okay. I'm cool with it. Awesome. Out here. Yeah. About damn time. <laughs> Almost coming to tears. I'm so depressed. <laughs> oh, it's alright. <laughs> Is mommy crying, Jackson? You better give her a kiss. <laughs> you better give her a kiss. Oh, good boy. How do you feel about leaving Florida? I'm very happy. <laughs> this is your home state, man. I know. I need to get the hell out. <laughs> Remember when we were starting the journey? Did we have any clue of what we were about to embark on? None. Heck no. I had no, no clue what was about to transpire. Well, I remember in the press conferences, we'd be like, absolutely, yeah. we're going to fill these stadiums. And afterwards, we're like, are we really going to? <laughs> like, we had ourselves believing that. How close do you think we were? I think about this a lot. To the event being done safely, meaning Oh, let's just put it in five to 10,000 seat stadiums. Let's keep it on the East Coast. Let's not go big because what happens if no one shows up? Like, don't take a risk. I mean, that could have easily happened. The truth is that when we arrived in New Jersey before the first game, it was far from sold out, but it just kept building. Ladies, the game last night had sold 74,200 tickets, which means in all likelihood it will be a sellout. Yeah! When we took that bus ride through the Meadowlands that first game, and there was all that traffic, and we're like, what the heck's going on? Look, there's Mia! Mia! Mom, please get her autograph for me! <laughs> I think I'm over it now. I remember all these people tailgating. USA! USA! And now they're wearing our jerseys. It was like, are we looking at them? Are they looking at us? I don't know. <laughs> Who's in the zoo? An electric atmosphere as we begin this World Cup with three weeks. You guys have been preparing for this event in your whole lives. Something that is purely ours, that you created. You've been doing it for your whole life. You are so ready. Just go out there and play your game. When you walk into that stadium, it kind of goes like up. You know, this stadium here is really yeah, wide. Yeah. That one goes up, and they just feel like everyone's on top of you. The sellout at Giant Stadium today, the opening match of the women's world. The couples were teary eyed. I just remember coming out of the tunnel, I had the chills, just the people were so loud. When we walked out from underneath that canopy, my heart was just racing. 
where the grass meets the concrete. I remember just thinking, oh my God. Just don't let me throw up. I think that's what Mia said. That's usually what I goes through yeah. my head. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. Just at least not, yeah, before halftime. <laughs> <laughs> On the eighth touch of the ball that she had in this match, in the 18th minute, roofing that shot. I'm used to watching Michelle hit balls like that, so the fact that I actually got a hold of one like that felt pretty good. It made us all feel good. Yeah. I think yeah. it was a relief, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. We got yeah. the goal. You <laughs> My God, if I screw up in the back, at least it'll be one to one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Thank you. <laughs> Seven, five, it's in! It's in! The Steve USA over Denmark, three to nothing. Almost 79,000 fans filled Giant Stadium for the start of Women's World Cup Soccer yesterday. It was the largest crowd to ever watch a women's sporting event here in the U.S. We've been dying for this arena, and this is a great start for the World Cup, and it's only going to get better as it continues. After that game and that opening moment, do you think we then knew how big it would be? I felt like, wow, you know, all the naysayers, we proved them wrong. For me, it was how full circle is this, you know? It's like, here we are kicking ass and filling stadiums. To me, it was like, I remember when and look at it now. When we were little girls, the idea of playing for the U.S. soccer team was just a crazy dream. There was no national team back then, no women's World Cup, no women's soccer at the Olympics, no role models to emulate. We just knew we loved to play. Our women's national team was born in the mid 80s. Young and feisty, we made it to the first ever women's World Cup in 1991. We've run up field, here's Akerstall with a chance, open net, she scores! When we won, we thought soccer would finally become popular back in the U.S. But when we returned home, three fans greeted us at the airport, and one was our bus driver. Even though it wasn't front page news, for us, it was a turning point. We had a taste of victory, but it's hard to stay on top. The United States has lost in the semis, one to nothing against Norway. After a devastating loss to Norway in the 1995 World Cup, we were determined to win it back in 99. Norway has defeated the United States. No one was more determined than Michelle, who had been there since day one. She was still our warrior in 99, even while battling chronic fatigue and knee surgeries in the double digits. We all looked up to her. And what we love most, our opponents feared her. From a mentality standpoint, unbelievable. She was the most technical player on our team with this dominant warrior mentality, and that's what it was. She was a warrior out there. When we would walk out, I'd be like, it's gonna be a bad day for you guys. That's what <laughs> you guys are gonna wanna leave. That's why I was so excited like to play because I knew that we were like stronger and fitter. Like our mentality was amazing. So I was, oh, I'd, I used to just look at him and go, oh, you're gonna have a hard day. Here's your first goal! World Cup mania reigning here in Chicago. Soccer fever is on fire in Chicago. The U.S. team raised its record to 2-0 by routing a previously high-scoring Nigeria 7-1. That's what I call a row, baby! Row! Two down, baby, two down. Two down, baby, two down. You want your socks. <laughs> Next up for the American team is North Korea, one of the cup favorites this weekend in Foxborough, Massachusetts. We'd like to give a great Massachusetts welcome to the United States team representing us in the Women's World Cup Soccer!
The whole team celebrated and accomplished it together, not as starters and reserves, but as one team unit. I get a lot of joy in that. USA wins the game to the group. This 9 for 9 presentation is brought to you by AT&T. Rethink. a ton of footage of us in the locker room and we are nuts Bri of course is like in her zone and, <laughs> and we're like dancing around her <laughs> You're in her face all the time. But I think that gave everyone this kind of sense of comfort. That really helped us, especially when things got a little nervous, like in that quarterfinal game. The U.S. women's soccer team takes on Germany tonight in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. If you lose in the quarterfinals, then the tournament is a total bust. Next day, FIFA just sends you home. Germany was one of the best teams in the world and our longtime rival. We knew it wasn't going to be easy. The pressure of the tournament being a success, you know, was on us and we had to keep winning. We took the field and got off to a rough start. Just in back to scoring and it's a goal for Germany. Own goal in the fifth minute. I just remember thinking we're just going to make a really simple play. It will be like no nonsense, just pass it back. And what I remember is not making any kind of eye contact or saying anything to Bri and passing it and then looking up and going like, oh my God, it's going in the goal. We couldn't get back fast enough. There's a big defensive breakdown there, miscommunication. And then immediately Carla coming over and was just like, no worries. For me, it's like that moment could have been the worst moment. She was just like, let it go. You know, we're going to win the game and you're going to help. And I was like, all right, if you say it, I believe you. Did you believe that, Carla? No, I was thinking, yeah. what the hell just happened? <laughs> no, of course not. But you know what? <laughs> I mean, get it together before I talk to her. People ask me about that too, Brandy. You know how I was when I played. No, no, no. I, yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, I never said anything to you. Yeah, no. I never gestured, I never said anything because I was thinking, I'm going to need her later. If there's a defender out there that has said they have not done that in practice or in front of 80,000 people, they're lying. <laughs> game of your yeah. entire life. You know, Brandy was one of the best defenders we had. And, and I said, man, you know, I need to get to her because I know what I would be doing to myself if I did that. And I just said, you know, we need you. I remember just keep saying, we need you. You know, forget about it. It's over. We need you. I feel so lucky to have had Carla as our voice. I can remember her on the field, right? So many times, like in moments of panic, right? It was like, we're fine. <laughs> Stop freaking out. Here's Edwards. That's blocked. It comes free. Shot, go. Timothy Melbourne is tied it up in the 16th minute. On the turn. Big Mon, it's deflected, and a goal for Germany right before the half. I just remember going in the half going, oh, my God. Because we had just gotten the momentum back and the crowd back in it, and then all of a sudden that goal happened. The only thing I really remember saying is, 
don't let your dream end today. We can play better. We have to play better. Off the half corner, in the air, it's Chester down, Chester, go! It's time! Randy Chastain takes a half chance and sends it home. And what a great celebration, you know she's relieved. It's all about thank you for letting me score a goal and redeem myself for the own goal. This is a new game now, they're tied up. Pressure intensified. Matt got subbed in to take that corner. This woman in women's professional <laughs> soccer. Instead of being all deferential and formal, like nice to meet you, Mr. President, we're like, Bill Clinton! <laughs> <laughs> I look back on that group, you know, it was really, truly a team of 20. Yeah. There's a genuine caring for each other. And I think there was a good checks and balances. It's like if you were kind of starting to stray a little bit, there was, you know, n no fear of saying, hey, you know, what's the mission? What's the goal? This is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we called it intervention. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I think that's part of it. I, I don't. I want. I didn't. I never wanted to mess up because I never wanted to be the one who didn't do something well for you. Right. People say, "Well, who are your? Who did you look to up to growing up?" And I was like, "Yeah, well, you know, the Yankees, but my teammates. You inspired me to compete every time I stepped out there." Yes, we like to compete. Hello, drug testers. Even off the field. Oh, like she <laughs> That's some hydration right there. <laughs> chug, 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 chug. Pee, pee. I'm going in. Brandy's going in. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. yeah baby! Oh. Oh. Okay, our tap dance routine. It was silliness with a purpose. <laughs> that was a good one. We were here to win it all, damn it. Woo! We won! Danielle Fotopoulos, Tisha Venturini, Saskia Weber. Shannon McMillan, <laughs> Tiffany Roberts, Lori Fair, I'm gonna do yours next. Sarah Whalen, Stop. Tracy Ducar, Christy Pierce, Cindy Parlow, Kate Sabrero, Tiffany Milbritt. Our formula for success was simple. Our team cared more about the we than the me. He had to drill. I got two fillings. Then I will have two fillings. 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 And we never let the newfound fame go to our heads. How do you feel? She's really nervous. What is she nervous about? No. No. She's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> only get this close because I've seen more than 50 million aggressive birds. <laughs> We're gonna try to wake this one up now. Out in the bush we call these stiffies. <laughs> Let's get it! <laughs> Hold 
Hold it down! Hold it down! Hold it down! Wait! Okay, put your weight on it. Put your weight on it. We had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> we did. That's what did. Tony allowed that. Like, right. he trusted yeah. us. And, and I think that just, that took the edge off. The meeting of the minds right yeah. there. Oh. Talk to me, Hack. Aaron, are you with the Nigerian Federation with that shirt on? Hi, Julie. Hello. Julie, let me get the back of your heat. It was a big old family. From the players to our coaches and staff, to our youngest cheerleaders. <laughs> Carlos and Jackson had a front row seat. And Joy's daughters, Katie and Carly, were also key members of our traveling circus. Look at all of Joy's stuff, would you? There's Joy's stuff. Remember all the crap I had to bring? I had so much stuff. <laughs> yeah, I always had food. <laughs> but how hard was it? Come on, you never complained. I only broke down <laughs> twice that I recall. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It took your mind off the game. When you came back from practice and yeah. they just wanted to play. <laughs> Having them be brought up with all of you made it great for me. Do you think we scarred him a little bit, though? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if Jackson's nose would ever be the same <laughs> after Mia gave him his first bloody nose. <laughs> this 9 for 9 presentation is brought to you by... We were off to the semifinals in California Ooh. and had officially entered unfamiliar territory. Charter flights and front page headlines. Immediately, we were demanding entourages and limo service. So, uh, yes, Mr. Mr. President, I'll show you it. The Americans Coast to Coast quest to reclaim the World Cup is in its final state, California. This is my soccer winder that I put up with all the stuff I found in Mia Hammond 13. And it says by Jessica, of course. And, it's, and it has a picture of me. Yeah, and, and this oh. is like a page dedicated to me and him, oh. yeah. basically. And there's, there's more stuff on me and him. There's, there's me and him. him. <laughs> Fans in the media always want a star. Ironically, Mia was the one who dreaded the spotlight the most. Mama Mia, that's the original one. Hold that up to your face. Let me see if it resembles you. Yeah, she's never in a favor. Mama Mia. Truly? Think of, like, all the pressure Mia had to bear. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As being the face, as being the one that they always wanted to interview. And then on top of that, she's got yeah. to score yeah. goals still and perform, because if she's not, that's the first question that's coming in her face. Mia, you're the highest scoring woman in the world. You didn't get a goal tonight. Why was that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mia. You carried us on your shoulders for a long time. Yeah. I will tell you, the hardest time about that whole um, experience was every day after practice when you guys would get to get on that bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't get on because I had to do the, the interviews, just because I know how special those moments are. The easy part was I knew it wasn't about me, you know? And it was about you guys. And I was a reflection of what you guys mean to me. And I hope that was my goal every time I stood in front of the camera was to make sure that um, I, I let you know that I appreciated you and um, that I played for you guys. Um, you did me. And, and we all knew so that. Mean, and we all so felt great. bad that, you know, you were the one shouldering the brunt of. Just for five seconds for every well j maybe a minute i felt bad for you and then you know no. but i mean just the way you handled it you look at some athletes now and they just take that and they run with it you set the foundation for how we were like the mentality of the team when you look at like the after effects of that and negotiating contracts and saying we want everyone 
to be paid the same. If you play on a national team roster, right, and you come in, you get the same pay. And Mia saying this in negotiations, I don't want to be paid more. I mean, taking it to that degree. You know, we came in at the base level. You know, we weren't getting paid, and we did it because we loved it. And I think that feeling never changed. Don't you remember when you got that 91 check for 500 bucks, you thought you'd have hit the darn lottery? Yeah. I thought that was the greatest thing I'd ever had. What about when per diem per was diem. raised? Cash. Yeah, from $10. Oh, cash. my gosh. Cash. That was awesome. Yeah. 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 That was what, exciting. Five bucks? Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Ten. It was 10 bucks, then, then all then of a sudden else. it was like, you get like, 30 bucks, get out of town. Like, <laughs> wow, I'm rich. Yeah. We didn't just look out for ourselves. We knew we had some leverage that we could set for the future so those kids wouldn't have to do the things that we did. That future is now being led by Abby Wambach, Alex Morgan, and Christy Rampone, the last member of the 99 team still playing. We sat down, the old bags and young guns, to compare notes. Is the food any better with a national team? Yes, yeah. yeah, it's. Do you, do you get cheddar cheese slices? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Every day. Who do? Every day. And do you get chocolate chips, like real good chocolate chips? Because that is something I want to be my legacy. <laughs> so where were you for the '99 World Cup that summer? Were you born? I was ten. Yes. <clears throat> Thank God. <laughs> and I was the biggest tomboy, so I was like, I want to do that. When did you think I can I can be that person out there? I can be that player. When you guys are tired, I was like, cool, spots just opened up. <laughs> Get out of the way! Oh, oh, yes. she knows. <laughs> what number do I want to wear? <laughs> that is awesome! Yeah. Without your inspiration, I'm doing something totally different right now. Really? Mm -hmm. What was it that clicked? <clears throat> the way that you guys had, like, this giant love for each other, you know? And that's something that spoke to me, and I was like, man, I want to play on a team like that. The team now, it's like every team wants to have their own vision and their yeah. own voice, but you still want to keep that tradition. That's why I had such joy in watching 2011 unfold. Rapino gets the crossing. It's towards Wombat! Oh, can you believe this? Abby Wombat has saved the USA's life in this World Cup! We tried to instill hope, and I think that's what you guys did in 99, and that's the kind of standard I think you guys set for us. It would be really cool, but you can't do it, to, to have the 99 World Cup team play against the 2011 team. It's just not possible, so I don't know. It's no, a, unless it's you a put a paramedic on the sideline, <laughs> an oxygen tank on my back, a cane. Now kids come up and they're like, my mom watched you play. Right. <laughs> now it's always a mom now. I'm like, yeah, I know. Soccer mania is sweeping the Bay Area. Hundreds lined up to score tickets for this weekend's Women's World Cup. Holy cow. Yeah. I love oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of red, white, blue. Oh, my gosh, she is oh, doing that. This crowd's going to be in. Uh, oh. We just need to go out and play hard from the beginning whistle because we know that that's what the Brazilians are going to do. USA will back in I think one of the big advantages we have is Brianna Scurry in goal. Bri just took over. She made some phenomenal saves that female keepers don't make. And then we got that late penalty. The U.S. women beat Brazil 2-0 in yesterday's World Cup semifinal, largely thanks to the heroics of goalkeeper Brianna Scurry. We are soccer crazy. 2.9 million homes were tuned to the ESPN broadcast of the U.S.-Brazil game last Sunday. Biggest cable audience for a soccer game, men's or women's. The U.S. women's soccer team arrived in Los Angeles. Fans gathered at L.A. International Airport to welcome their heroines to town. We played from day one because we love to play, and, and it's nice to see that, uh, that these people are so excited about what we're doing. The U.S. women's soccer team is one victory away from a World Cup championship, and their popularity has soared. It's just a practice. No. Yeah. Do you remember the days when we couldn't get this many people out to our this games? This is yes. crazy! 
let's stay focused because it's a bit of a circus here. Let's stay focused. Okay. Leah, how do you put up with all, with all the hype and attention? Excuse me. The game is getting trying to get out of the way. Um, what do you mean, all this? What about you, all the girls about... that want to be just like you? Um, well, I don't think it's just like me. I think... You guys are like the girls next door. They could relate to you. You did all the things that, you know, Americans want to see in their sports heroes. You have to blow up the Nine for Nine, presented by AT&T. Two days until the finals, and if you don't know what finals, you may already have missed some of the most exciting sports action in a long time. The Saturday's championship match between the U.S. and China in Women's World Cup Soccer has all the atmosphere of a Super Bowl. Clintons will be there, 92,000 people will be there, and millions will be watching around the world. The U.S. women's team has already been beaten twice this year by China, and they're not the favorites for the final. They're a great attacking team, great organiza organization defensively. It's going to take everybody um, to play their absolute best game on the same day to beat this team. Everything you work for came down to that game. I knew it was very emotional because you knew at some point that you brought the sport to a place it's never been before. I kept saying to myself, hold it together. You have a long game ahead. You know what, I love stories of people who, I, I was at the Rose Bowl during that game. Oh, it was hot. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, well, my feet were melted into my shoes. <laughs> yeah, how about chasing those Chinese girls all over the place? Battle for every ball. USA attacks, and it's facing comes. Here's Mia, tackle the way. This is dangerous. China's in, and Scurry's down. Tackle at the edge of the box, and clear. It was a game dominated by defense. No one was going to let anybody run free. 90th minute. It is still scoreless here. The stage could be set for sudden death overtime. Mary Ng strikes it hard. Scoring comes out. Somebody got a piece. Looks like Michelle Akers is the player down. She goes up in a tangle with Brianna Scurry and actually gets hit in the head. When you went down, you're on the ground just in this heat. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. And then you kind of get up, and you're like, I, I'm fine. I can play. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> and I like, started getting angry. And I I'm know. like, dude, you're done. You're done. Doc Adams, he would like look over my head. Mish, snap out of it. <laughs> of course I'm trying to snap out of it. <laughs> Our experience had to have been so much different than yours, because you would have chronic fatigue with the IV in. Yeah, that was hard. It was like I was trying to get my body to work the entire time to make it to make it to the game. And then Bri just, yeah. she just ended it. Tough way to end the World Cup career. Michelle Akers leaving. As overtime started, when Mish went out, they started to attack that space. And uh, they got in a couple times. Sunwet with some space down the middle. She burns, it's deflected. Corner kick. Christine Lillick guards the near post. Off the corner from China. Henner, send up the line. Rebound was clear. 
Look at Christine Lilly making that huge save. That ball was heading for goal. I remember a ball going by me and me thinking, oh, <laughs> and then it coming back by me again and me thinking, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the referee was like, oh, my God, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> I want to kiss that forehead right now. <laughs> We're still alive. <laughs> I know. Thank you. 120 minutes in intense heat and pressure, and now the biggest pressure of their lives for most of these women, maybe all, their most important penalty kicks ever. Lauren Gregg had been charting penalties, who makes them and who misses them. We had Mia on the list, and you know, I think we all agreed that she probably would not want to take one. You talk about pressure here. When Tony gives the order, first thought that came to mind, Mia, when you oh, heard. Oh, God. Because <laughs> <laughs> unlike all Michelle's successes at practice of taking penalty kicks, I was taking them too, but I couldn't score any of them. And um, Lauren said, listen, you're one of our top goal scorers you should be taking these. And I was like, you know what, you're right. The biggest controversy came down around whether Brandy should take one or not. I said, go up to Brandy and see if she wants to take a penalty. She's got to want to take a penalty. And, and ask her if she'll take it left-footed, because we needed to show Gao Hong, the Chinese goalkeeper, something different. Lauren came up and says, do you want to take a kick? And so I was like, yeah, of course. You have to take it with your left foot. And I was like, OK. I think I was too exhausted to yeah, even see, have that some guts right there. Holy cow, I've been mean, like, hell no, I'm not taking my left <laughs> What is wrong with you, coach? What are you freaking crazy? Every player needs to be prepared to take a penalty and make a penalty. You never want a game to come down to PKs because it's really, there's some skill involved, but it's a lot of luck as well. You always look for somebody big to take your first penalty kick for momentum. So here's Carla Overbeck. The shot will go. I remember how high you jumped after you yeah, scored. Yeah, I was just glad it went in. <laughs> I was jogging down going, if they see my knees shaking while I'm running the ball, my god, do you think they can see me shaking? <laughs> I was like, I hope not. Pass it against Gal Hong. Go! She didn't even move. Yeah, Gal was like... She kind of went like this. Yeah, she did the little, did the little stutter. Yeah. yeah. Ryan is scoring. Visualize it. I didn't look at any of your kicks. I just knew when it was my turn, I had to step up. But then when the number three kicker came up, number 13, something in my head said, look. And so I turned and I looked at her, and her body language was horrible. Her shoulders were slumped. The way she was walking, she just didn't seem confident. And I said out loud to myself, I said, this is the one. The shot. I know I was out there a little early, but I'm gonna push the envelope as far as I can. And if the referee calls me back, it didn't matter because I would have saved it the second time anyway. We knew you were gonna get at least one. All eyes now on Christine Lilly for the USA to take the lead. I was gonna go to the goalie's right, because that's where I always go. But she was diving that way, so I'm like, oh my God, do I switch? Do I switch? <laughs> and I had this turmoil in my head for like 30 seconds. I'm like, no, stay with what you do. Uh -huh. I didn't know and you I was even I watched that. both these guys went and everyone went to that side. I was the only one that went that way. Lily, the shot, go! After my shot, then I was nervous again for you and you. When I went up, I looked at one panel on the ball. All I wanted to do was just like smooth stroke. That's all I thought about. Did you have any of those doubts you had no, going into penalty not, kicks? You no. didn't even think of it. Well, no, it's, I, as soon as I had that conversation with uh, Lauren, it was done. The greatest goal scorer in the world is ready. Shot of the goal! The USA could win the World Cup on this next kick. Chastain will take it. I remember standing being on the right side of the center circle. I couldn't even look. I was on the end, I remember, and I was just looking down. There were over 90,000 people, and I could not hear a thing. Dead silent. The oddest thing about it was when we walked out to the middle, I was like, what number am I? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know? No, I had no idea. So I was like, so then the order started going. I'm like, well, I'm not one, I'm not two, <laughs> I'm not three. OK, I'm not four. All right, I must be the last one.
Randy has probably taken that penalty kick to win a World Cup a thousand times, but 999 had been in her head. I had so many playground moments, like hitting the home run or scoring the last basket, and the time counting down and just, yeah! do you get asked about that moment? You know, I've had that question a million times. Did you plan that? And I said, yes. I planned I would be the last person to take the penalty kick after Bryce saved one, and then we would win, and I would take my shirt off. She said, I didn't even know I was number five. No, I said, yeah. I didn't even know what number. She would have done it if it was one. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, Joe. Maybe so. She was yeah. thanking her lovely stars that she didn't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Were you sure? You were going to make us do But I just found out, true story, last year, Tony is sitting across from me at this big ESPN dinner, and I hear that in the corner of my ear, <laughs> I hear him saying, well, Fowdy was number five, and I said to Lauren, erase Fowdy and put Brandy back in there. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was number five. <laughs> I could have been a star. <laughs> I could have gotten naked. <laughs> they erased me off the list. Yeah. <laughs> it made her take it with a foot she never even takes it with. <laughs> A moment I'm sure these women have been visualizing for years. It's still the most watched soccer match in U.S. history. 40 million. And someone once asked me, were you pioneers or was 99 an anomaly? And that question actually has haunted me for a long time. Because we so badly didn't want to be the only ones. This is going to be the standard that everyone else would then follow with. You think that's happened? Our team, like that group, I, I mean, we were kind of a, an anomaly. You know, like I think that group of people was so special. I don't, I, I, it was like, it was meant to be that group to, to do this incredible thing together and make all these changes and kind of start this wave. So uh, when you asked that, I was like, it's both. And I think it will always be both, because I don't think that can be ever duplicated. It inspired so much stuff that we never understand. It was the most exciting sports event I believe I've ever seen. We learned a lot today about soccer, about winning <laughs> kids, <laughs> about <laughs> courage and endurance, and about genuine sportsmanship. I cannot thank you enough for the gift that you have given to the United States, which is even bigger than this. Yeah. We wanted it to be a huge event. We wanted it to make history. But also, we wanted to, you know, pass on this great thing to all the younger kids that were starting to watch us play. Not just from going out there and competing and winning, but making sure, you know, all those young girls who were in the parking lots with our jerseys on, that whatever they wanted to do or dream or be, that they could. And that's what was so empowering about the entire experience. This generation is living their dream now and facing their own challenges. As we know, progress isn't always a straight line. Although the success of 99 may be hard to replicate, our team unleashed the possible, both on and off the field. You're ready. <laughs> For the next generation, it's no longer a matter of if, but when. <laughs> Get back out there. Jog it out. Jog it out. What does this team mean to you guys? Now that you're 14 years away from it all. You're all the people that I grew up with. You know, we were teenagers, and then we got married, and we had kids and then there's well, oh yeah winning a couple you know world cups and olympic games and then all of a sudden now you're apart for me for the longest time that was you know i was missing you and i was missing this and that was hard for a long time well it just too goes back to we had fun we all haven't seen each other in a while and we're all back here laughing again yeah you know yeah, that exactly. to me is one of the most not at you though michelle <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. It's nothing <laughs> changes, that's all I say. Exactly. It's nothing like, changes. you know, you step right back into it. <laughs> like a nice pair of old cowboy boots. Well, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just the soccer. It was like, these are these amazing women we were around that taught us about life. And that I will be forever thankful for. <laughs> One, two, three, four, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. <laughs> 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 nice! Jules, do you want to take your PK now? <laughs> Okay.